Jupiter, who will be finishing the Reaction to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Episode 6. Uh, let's get to it. Are there you? Are there you? No wonder. You should have seen his face when I walked into the tent as the incident's head investigator. Truly a delicious sight. He knew I could expose him at any time, so we made a little arrangement. He could donate me some money every now and then, and I'd conveniently forget I ever met him. Too bad about Yeesh, that blackmailing people. Received, which ruined my little experiment. Nevertheless, it was quite fascinating to see his paranoia evolve the way it did. A single subtle hint from me. The thing is, he didn't have to say a word about this. Afraid I was going to try something to end him. Humorous, really, considering he ended up being murdered by his supposed allies, the nauseatingly pretentious doctor, and his one-eyed PTSD damsel. All in all, I don't regret coming here today. This trial has been a source of endless entertainment for me. Hell, I could hardly contain my laughter when she made that confession about being the true culprit behind the Helio 6 incident. It was hilarious. Sick. Vile creature. So congratulations, Mr. Wright. You've won your little game. You have proved beyond reasonable doubt that I committed some very serious crimes in Aresia. Forgery, blackmail, providing insurgents with Helio 6. For getting this far, I have to commend you. I have just one simple question for you, Mr. Wright. What are you going to do about it? What the hell <laughs> question is that? I'm sure me and everyone else in this courtroom wants to make you answer for your crimes. Yeah, we're all yeah, but they kind of like, oh, the, the incident four years ago, did they? That with what right? Explain yourself, Adele Renard. Ha. Huh. And here I thought two lawyers would have figured it out already. How disappointing. In the heat of a pursuit, it can be so very easy to forget what really matters. Like the fact that this trial isn't about what happened four years ago in Aresia. Yeah. You scum. You cannot just summon a man to testify in someone else's trial and then suddenly accuse him of a crime that was committed years ago and bears no clear relevance to the trial at hand. True. Even if you had all the evidence to prove that he is guilty. The justice system just doesn't work that way. But you already confessed! Sure I did. But this isn't my trial. Nor does this court have legitimate judicial power over crimes that were committed abroad in the service of the army. This court has no legal right to detain me, let alone... Unless you are proven to be the killer. We were never playing the same game. Everything uh, you think you won today is irrelevant. <laughs> this establishes your motive beyond a shadow of a doubt, Renard. You killed Captain Harvey. Because he was going to get immunity from your blackmail and expose you! Ah, mens rea. The guilty mind. But thoughts or dark fantasies do not kill people, Mr. Wright. Having a motive doesn't make it any more probable that I killed him. No matter how much you would like to see things that way. Besides, haven't we had the murderers confess to Captain Harvey's death already? Give up, you stubborn worm. <laughs> now, if you're done wasting your breath, allow me to tell you what happens next. I am going to walk out those doors behind me, out of this courthouse, and disappear from the very face of the earth, and all of you will be powerless to stop me. Unless you wish to break the law you hold so dear. Actually, I insist. Try and stop me by force. Show everyone that what you call justice cannot be achieved unless you break the laws keeping it afloat. Nobody? Not that blue cretin or his obnoxious aide? Not the little girl who feels the need to arm herself in order to be taken Just whip him. <laughs> It'd be funny. Not the senile, shriveled old man who perfectly embodies justice in all of its gullibility. 
You're all a bunch of idiots letting me walk away, you know. But I guess it can't be helped. Take a good, hard look. For this is the last you will ever see of Captain Adele Renard, the man who masterminded the Helio 6 incident and walked away scot-free. <laughs> Obvious. Renard, you bastard. Seriously, what's with their faces? This is weird. Oh, you won't be doing anything of the sort, Siegfried. The only place you and your little Cyclops girlfriend are going is Death Row for the murder of Janice Harvey. And I know when they seat you down in that chair. Just before they flick the switch, you will remember this moment and weep in rage and anger. And the thought thrills me more than anything in my life. But I was attempted murder. Before I go, I would like to have a little something to remember you all by. Any last words? Nasty sh eating cow fing sucker. Jesus. No! I... I can't let this monster escape! I have to- OBJECTION! <laughs> Captain and Dale Bernard, you will not leave this courtroom yet. Hmm. I don't take orders from little girls. But you Sexist. ...acting prosecutor when in the role of a witness to this court. I have no intention of letting you walk away before I'm done with you. That's too bad, because you have no right to keep me here against my will. You're wrong, Your Honor. Uh, yes, Miss Von Karma? This witness has used his time on the stand to brag and insult most every party in this room, including you, and is refusing to finish his testimony. That's why the prosecution suggests that he be held in contempt of court, unless he finishes his testimony on his actions on Absolution Day. Miss Von Karma, I think you have a very valid point. Of course. Francisca, you're a genius. The defense <laughs> his rival saved the day. He has been quite disrespectful. Tisk, tisk, tisk. What? Nick, what's going on? The contempt of court is the judge's ultimate weapon. If someone is disturbing the formal court proceedings in any way, like curling insults, they may be held in contempt. That means the judge can order the witness to be detained immediately for a period of time, unless they comply with the court's orders. You should remember this. You were held in contempt once. She was? Yeah! <laughs> <clears throat> now then, Captain Adel Renard, this court has heard quite enough of your egotistical pompousness. You will finish your testimony as Miss Von Karma asked. Or I will have you in contempt in a swing of a gavel. You might also recall that the doors are locked, so attempting to escape wouldn't prove to be a very fruitful idea. <laughs> I see you'll be staying with us for a while longer, Captain. That hopefully won't be a problem, officer. So, allow me to tell you what happens next. You will testify exactly what you did on the day of the murder, or the judge will have a cozy little cell ready for you. While you're rotting in there, I think the Allied Nations headquarters will find plenty of time to start looking into your involvement in the Helio 6 incident. Oh, you're screwed. <laughs> now this game is getting quite interesting. A magnificent maneuver, I must say. Well, oh, because you can keep your ego in check. This game can be played by both of us. As we know, today is the last day of Mike November's expedited trial. No time for investigations or recesses anymore. I'm your final witness. Your final lifeline. If I'm put in contempt, you will have nobody left to testify, and the trial ends with these two murderers being found guilty of their crime. If I go down, I'm dragging these two to hell with me. Dick. That won't do for the defense, will it? After all, 
You stubbornly believe they didn't do it. That you can still somehow pin Harvey's murder on me. This is my final testimony. And after that, you will have to let me go. The gloves are off. So have at you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You may have established that I wasn't at my office at the time of the murder, and that I had a very good motive. But you're forgetting something very important. I wouldn't know how to craft a bomb if my life depended on it. As for where I was, I was jogging in the regiment woods until I heard the alarms. Face it, Mr. Wright, you can never prove I did it. So why don't you just lay down and die? Hmm. Witnesses' last statement shall be stricken from the record. As if I care. Let's end this. Mr. Wright, are you ready for your final cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. I am. And, and I'll, I'll be, be damned, damned if I let, let this slimy, slimy bastard off the hook. Then, begin your cross-examination. <laughs> this is futile, you know. You are destined to lose no matter how hard you try. Francisca gave me this opportunity, and everyone's placing their faith in me. It's up to me alone to take them down. But can I really do this? Do I have the right evidence? Have I really understood everything? The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. What am I thinking? Now's not the time to doubt myself. I need to stand proud and tall, no matter what happens. It's time to put on a confident smile and bring this man to justice. Let's begin, Renard. Alrighty then. You may have established that I wasn't at my office at the time of the murder, and that I had a very good motive. But you're forgetting something very important. You could come up with as many lies as you can, but I will expose every single one of them as long as it takes. How dramatic. If you weren't such a weakling, we would truly be two of a kind. I... I'm nothing like you and I never will be. Really? Think about it, Mr. Rice. You too are a predator. You prey on the witnesses eager to find their weak spots and then exploit them in order to achieve your own goal of winning the trial. After they have nothing left to offer, you discard them like gnawed carrions. He's you not wrong, Bernard. I fight because I trust in my client, and to reveal the truth behind each case. But isn't that what the prosecutor over there is also trying to do? Only to her, the truth is that your client is the murderer, and she will fight equally fiercely to prove it. Someone's truth is a lie. Maybe there is no truth. You can't yes, handle the truth. You will not drag <laughs> me into this. Tell me, Mr. Wright, why does a potential murderer deserve your trust when it means you have to distrust everyone else? The police, the prosecution, the witnesses, I am certain that in your head, you have already suspected every member of the regiment for this crime, and feverishly tried to connect the dots to figure out how they could have done it. Such is your nature, and you preach about trust? Just look at the pot calling the kettle black. Trusting your client is the core of the defense attorney's creed. A trust in other people is the very basis of a civil society. A society that needs to be protected from monsters like you. What hollow rhetoric. Trust is mankind's greatest weakness. And a society... Uh, that would be greed and religion. <laughs> those... <laughs> those who are above the artificial boundaries of laws and morals. Your creed is worthless. In the end, it's all about you and your satisfaction. Everyone else can just as well burn. 
This is your last warning, Captain Renard. One more relevant statement, and I'll have you held in contempt. Oh, dear. Mr. Wright, what do you think? Should the judge hold me in contempt? <clears throat> your Honor, please. Let's continue with the testimony. That's what I thought. Now, as I was saying, you are forgetting something critical. I wouldn't know how to craft a bomb if my life depended on it. Hold it! You... you must have used something else to kill Harvey! Yeah, the bus. Or the... Said he had to hit the to back of the head, right? so... He obviously hit him with something. Your skin, Nick. He knows he's on his last legs! It would serve you well to think for a moment before opening your mouth. Or perhaps you have some evidence to show. I... I... Concentrate, Phoenix. Take a deep breath and clear your mind. There has to be something in the court record. Do save yourself the trouble. You and I both know you have nothing. As for where I was... I was jogging in the regiment woods until I heard the alarms. Hold it! That's an outright lie! No, no, no. I assure you, it is the truth. It was a beautiful day, and I couldn't resist the urge of some physical exercise. I have to counter the effects of smoking, after all. If you doubt my story, then prove me wrong. But you can't do that, can you? Face it, Mr. Wright. You can never prove I did it. Objection! It feels like every single cell in my body echoed that objection. Finally, everything's falling into place. It all makes sense now. You like saying objection, but I know it's a court, but still. Adele Renard, I've got you now. You want me to tell the court how you murdered Harvey? So be it. Captain Harvey was poisoned. What? <laughs> Can you believe this moron? For three days, you fought over who put the bomb in the iron chamber. And now, you're saying Harvey was poisoned? Indeed. The bomb threw the entire investigation wildly off track. Because we believed the victim died as a result of the explosion. When in fact he was already dead when it hit. Captain Harvey did not go out with a bang, but a whimper. Oh, so what did old Harvey ingest? Cyanide? Atroquinine? Mm. Tubocurin, perhaps? No. The cause of his death is ironically something that was supposed to keep him alive. His heart medicine. Traces of it were recovered from Captain Harvey's bloodstream. Okay. Oh, so right. We know the victim was on permanent medication. And wouldn't it be natural that the victim had the medicine in his bloodstream when he died? Certainly, yeah. Your Honor. But there's more to this. Allow me to explain. Captain Harvey's medication was switched not too long before the day of the murder. In fact, Dr. Siegfried brought Captain Harvey his new medication when he visited him on Absolution Day. The medicine in this autopsy report, however, is his old brand, which should not have been found in his bloodstream. Pa! Harvey probably just popped one of his old pills out of habit. That can't be true. If Harvey did abide to his habits, there wouldn't be any heart medicine in his body in the first place because he was prescribed to take his medication after lunch. Menial details. None of this proves that Harvey was poisoned by someone, least of all me. Then would you care to explain why there was a note in your office reminding you to purchase more Pace OK? The very same prescription medication Harvey used to be on? <clears throat> That's none of your business. I find hmm. it very odd that someone like you would have knowledge or access to a prescription drug for cardiac arrhythmia. Unless you use it to treat your own heart condition. The same one Harvey had. What a ridiculous huh. assertion. Then you probably won't mind if we have the bailiff search your person. What? Of course I do. How the hell do you justify something like that? 
According to Dr. Siegfried, those with the condition are always supposed to have the medication on hand in case the symptoms worsen, especially due to anxiety under stress. You've been squirming for quite some time, and I don't think you're doing yourself any favors by prolonging the dose you need. So, Renard, are you going to cough up the medication voluntarily, or will the bailiff have to pat you down? Fine. I carry the goddamn medication. This still proves nothing. While you provide some good points, Mr. Phoenix Wright, I'm afraid I do have some doubts as well. One would think that if Captain Harvey actually died because of an overdose, the toxicological analysis of his body would have made that quite clear. I'm getting there, Miss Von Karma. Just please bear with me. This has less to do with how much of the medication there was in Harvey's body, and more with what it was ingested with. Oh yeah, alcohol. You can't have alcohol Captain with it. Captain Harvey had been drinking his Eurasian spirits during lunch. Dr. Siegfried, you're trained in pharmacology. What would happen if someone were to ingest peso K heart medicine with hard alcohol? Nothing good, that's for certain. Since both act as pharmacological depressants, the synergistic effect of the two potentiates the effect to a dangerous level, which could potentially slow the heart rate enough to cause cardiac arrest, even if the medication was a normal dose. Taking into account Harvey's medical history, I'd say he'd have at most 15 minutes to live if he did mix his medication and alcohol, and I had made very sure that he was aware of the risk. Thank you for your input, Doctor. Now, there's something that Mr. November testified about during the first day of the trial, which had also been bothering me. So when you left Harvey, he was alive? Yeah, drunk, but alive. Wait, did you say drunk? Yep, that's partly why I didn't get much out of him. It was an ugly sight to behold. Now, let's recall what Staff Sergeant Tennant said on the second day of the trial. Did... Captain Harvey actually do anything during your fight? Uh, well, not really. The man just sat there and gave me the Harvey stare. The only thing he told me was to get out when my time was up. But I could see that he was boiling inside, so it felt like an s rank victory to me. I even saw the man pop open his precious bottle of spirits before I left, so I must have left quite an impact. Hmm. Mr. November entered the Iron Chamber at 12.11 mere 11 minutes after Captain Harvey had opened up the bottle, and he claims the victim was already drunk by that time. But I posit that Captain Harvey was not drunk. He was in stupor from ingesting heart medicine mixed in the spirits. Huh. If this is the case, then Harvey was undoubtedly dead by 1225, before the bomb ever got a chance to explode. Miss Von Karma, I expect you to explain to the court why none of this is mentioned on any of the autopsy reports you've presented. Very well. I admit that there was an oversight in the initial investigation, as none of us suspected that consumption of alcohol had any role in the victim's death at the time. In the end, we only tested for his heart medication levels and some of the more common poisons. However, we also made sure to take extra samples for later testing in case something like this arose, and may scan them now to see what we can find. Oh, this is just too much. Let's all lose our minds and play along with Mr. Wright's insanity, shall we? Say your precious analysis confirmed that Harvey kicked the bucket because he took heart medicine mixed in his spirits. What would it mean for this case? I'll tell you. It would make everyone who ever visited Harvey a suspect. Anyone could have poisoned that bottle during these four years. Do you realize how easy it is hmm. to inject something through a bottle cap with a simple syringe? Not in this case. The bottle of spirits was specially sealed with a solid iron plug. Injecting anything through that would be impossible. Which means the murderer had to personally be there to spike Harvey's drink. That's quite a creative little story. Too bad it's fundamentally flawed, and I bet Little Miss Prosecutor can tell you why. I'm sorry to say, but the forensics team analyzed the contents of the bottle and found nothing out of the ordinary. See? That makes your theory absolutely worthless. Not necessarily. 
It just means that the killer didn't poison the whole bottle. Miss Von Karma, were the contents of Captain Harvey's drinking glass analyzed as well? Unfortunately, that was impossible. The plaster dust had soaked up the spirits that had been in the glass. <laughs> How unfortunate for you two, isn't it? Although, even if you had found something, it wouldn't have made a difference. Because you cannot prove that I, or anyone else not on that list, went to the Iron Chamber on Absolution Day. If you're saying I poisoned Harvey's drink, I should have been there soon after Staff Sergeant Tennant had left, correct? All right. I would certainly make sure he didn't try anything funny while dying, so I'd certainly keep a constant eye on him. This is purely hypothetical, of course, but lo and behold, after some ten minutes, in waltzes the graceless Private November. But does he remember seeing anyone else there? No. How did our murderer know to avoid him? And how did he hide in the desolate bunker? Did they just vanish into thin air? Hmm. No. This vanishing act has a lot less to do with the supernatural. Take that! Isn't that the box I hid in? Precisely. As we can see mm -hmm. from the addition of those that. blueprints, empty cardboard boxes lay in the hallway leading to the iron chamber, among those containing Captain Harvey's belongings. And they could easily conceal a slender enough human being inside. The bunker's loudspeaker must have alerted you, giving you 60 seconds to hide. And with no place to do so in the iron chamber, you rushed back to the hallway and hid in one of the empty boxes. Uh. Gotcha. <laughs> is conjecture after conjecture. Could haves and maybes. Those aren't worth jack. None of your evidence is conclusive. We'll get there. Just hang on tight, Renard. Lucky for you, Mr. November's visit with Captain Harvey was cut short by a phone call from Dr. Siegfried. It would have been quite incriminating had Harvey died in front of him. What wasn't so lucky was that Mike decided to pull the bunker's electricity kill switch on the way out. This mixed things up quite badly for your plan, because you had yet to remove your keycard logs from Captain Harvey's computer. <laughs> Since you're in the habit of wearing gloves, naturally you wouldn't leave fingerprints on the kill switch when you turn the power back on. However, the fact that Mike had pulled the switch forced you to wait 10 minutes for the computer to boot again, before you could proceed to the deletion. But then something unexpected happened. Right as you were entering the Iron Chamber again, Captain Harvey's office was called again by Dr. Siegfried, who was trying to make sure Private Mike November had really left. I imagine at this point, Captain Harvey realized his end was near. So when the phone rang, he used the last remnants of his strength to try and answer it. So you rushed to silence him with a strike to the neck. After unplugging the phone line, you were forced to wait 10 minutes for the computer to boot up before you could access the log files and delete your visits from the record. After all, Harvey was hardly in a position to struggle anymore, so using his hand to authorize the deletion would have been a breeze. On your way back out at 1225, you pulled the switch back again, otherwise it would have been left in the wrong position, which would have aroused suspicion. But little did you know that you weren't the only one with murderous intentions that day. Inside the bust of Captain Harvey, a time bomb was ticking, set to go off in just yeah, five more <laughs> minutes, ultimately causing the alarm at 12.35 when the power returned again. However, you were still making your way back to the security office, which is located approximately 20 minutes from the Iron Chamber. It took you 10 more minutes to rush back and officially acknowledge the alarm. <laughs> That is quite a story. Truly, you are the king of conjecture. As if the explosion in the iron chamber wasn't enough to explain why the phone line was disconnected. Besides, what reason do we have to believe anything the doctor has said? I give you credit for creativity, but I believe it's also time I invoke Occam's razor. You claim mm -hmm. I jumped through all those hoops to kill Harvey. I, in turn, propose Harvey merely stashed some of his old medication and committed suicide using that. Honestly now, which is the more likely option? 
After all, without a single piece of solid evidence, your tale is no more credible than the ramblings of a lunatic. What I've said is the truth. And once I place you on the scene, this case will be clear as day. How precious. You still think you have hope of winning. I don't only think I can win. I know I can. For years, you've been avoiding your punishment, Captain Renard. With lies, deceit, coercion, and more luck than a monster like you deserves. But it all ends today, and it ends right here and right now. And the final piece of evidence that will seal your fate is this. Take that! Boy, that's the inconclusive suicide note. <laughs> that... that's the best you can do? It's all I need to put you on the scene of the crime. Wh what Your Honor, members of the jury, two very different suicide notes were recovered from the Iron Chamber. We already know that one of them was made by Dr. Siegfried, but the final mystery remaining is the author of the second note. However, I think we'll find out soon. Let's recall something that Miss Von Karma told us at the start of today's trial. You're saying that it's possible to detect if two handwritten forgeries have been made by the same person? It is complicated, but possible, Your Honor. If by chance two forgeries were attempting to imitate the same person's handwriting, we can scan them for shared deviations in the penmanship to determine if the forgeries are by the same person. Okay. Captain Renard, you submitted this Helio 6 shipping manifest as evidence to the court, and we've already confirmed it's a forgery. It also conveniently includes Captain Harvey's signature, as does the inconclusive note. Oh so, boy. <laughs> what do you think the handwriting analysis will tell us if we try comparing the handwriting on these two documents? I have the scanner with me, sir. We're ready to begin the analysis right now. Do it, detective! No. That's convenient. Alright, <laughs> here we go. Analyzing. Please wait. Stop. What's the matter, Captain? Not feeling too well? Analysis 20% complete. Stop this. Analysis 25% complete. That's slow. <laughs> I order you to stop at once. The entire court held their breath as the scanner continued its analysis. Captain Renard was squirming and sweating like an eel on a hot plate. Until finally, the device announced its verdict. Handwriting analysis complete. Results 100% match. And You're screwed, Bernard. You have no way of squirming your way out of this one. But you have a choice. You can face your defeat as a man or as a coward. So, which one will it be, witness? Uh. <laughs> now, what? <laughs> Oh, you may think you have me backed into a corner, but you forget that when you corner a ferocious beast, you leave it with no choice but to fight back with all the fury it can muster. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah! I would rather die than surrender oh, to the light of shit. How did no one press him for bombs? Seriously. What I have here is a Helio 6 chemical detonator. And what I just attached to it is a piece of Helio 6. Together, they have the potential to send every single person in this courtroom straight to hell. B Bailiff, do something! Stop the witness at all co- Don't try to be a hero. This detonator is customized with a dead man switch, so shooting me would prove to be very foolish indeed. Well, this is escalated. It means that if he's incapacitated, the bomb will detonate on its own. Oh. Precisely. This is to ensure that I get my way. See, Aresian money was not the only thing I grabbed to remember my dear insurgent friends by. You spineless coward! You wouldn't! Why not? I have absolutely nothing more to lose. 
This is my true last stand. I have but a single simple demand. Unlock the door. Now. I wish to leave. Objection! You were bluffing at Del Renard. You couldn't possibly have anticipated this. I admit, I never in my wildest dreams expected you to expose me for killing Harvey. But the astronomical possibility existed, so I planned for it. Only a true fool leaves his very fate to chance and puts themselves. Well, if they get the finally get the bomb away from him, your life is pretty much over, I buddy. <laughs> the situation extremely clear for you. You will either unlock that door and let me leave. Nobody gets hurt, and everyone lives happily ever after. If not, everyone here dies. And if I see anyone calling for help with their phones, I'm detonating this on the spot. There will be no negotiations or cross-examinations. Make your choice. Well, this is gonna be hard. You truly are a ruthless man, Adel Redhound. Your actions have led to unimaginable suffering, and you seem incapable of feeling any remorse for your crimes. You have no place in a civilized society. Like Hitler. However, it is my duty as a judge to first ensure the safety of every person in this courtroom is not compromised. I agree to your demand. Bailiff, unlock the door. <laughs> I knew you'd do the rational thing, Your Honor. Do not think of this as a victory, Renard. You may walk away, but you will never be a free man again. You will live the rest of your life as an international fugitive. Sooner or later, you will be caught and will have to pay for your crimes. Unless he throws a bomb in there as he runs. At least too much credit. For them, I'm just another bad guy to look around for. And I'll be out of this country before they can even open an investigation. So your patronizing is as useless as any verdict you would rule in my absence. I will never be held accountable. Now, the keys, if you will. Damn it! We already had him! See, Mr. Wright? I told you you'd lose. I always win, even if I have to change the rules to do so. You... you did so... Disgusting cheater! The doors! Like in every PvP, everybody cheats. Nothing I could do. The only thing preventing the bailiffs from stopping Renard is the threat of the bomb going off. So if I could prove without a shred of doubt that he's bluffing, we could stop him from escaping. But I doubt I have more than one shot at this. Do I have the one final piece of evidence that disarms him? Objection! Man, did, was it the only supposed to give to the other guy? You came so very close to worming your way out. Open the door. That bomb of yours is an impressive prop. I have to give you that. But I don't think you'll detonate it, even if you wanted to. Shut up! Do you want to die? You're not a threat to any of us. Open this goddamn door right now. Where's that detonator might indeed be a chemical detonator. Designed specifically for and only for Helio 6. The explosive itself is definitely nothing more than a dud. What are you blathering about, you lunatic? You've already done everything needed to call your bluff. Namely, you took off your gloves. What? Helio 6 was designed to be powerful, yet safe. But it came with a price. The chemical coating was known to cause severe painful blistering upon skin contact. Yep, you're screwed. Yet your hand seems perfectly fine. The fact that the Helio 6 doesn't burn your hand is a telltale sign it's lost its explosive properties. And seeing how it's attached to a chemical detonator that only works with Helio 6, I say there's nothing for us to fear. I... I swear, if I hear one more word from Mr. Wright, I will send us all to hell. Would you really Do trust it. this feeble attorney with your life? I would. And countless others already have. No matter what Nick might seem to you. To me, he is someone I know I can always depend on. He fights to protect the innocent. And I know that he would never do anything to put me or anyone else in harm's way. I believe in him. And there is no one else in the world whom I'd rather trust with my life. How sickening. 
The defense's aide has been blinded by her naivety. No sensible person would trust this man. Ah, finally she whipped him. Allow me to prove you wrong. You, you fools. It looks like your final line of defense has fallen, Renard. Pay lift secure the witness. This and your life is over. The long list of evils you'll be held accountable for. For being an abomination to humanity. For betraying your country and comrades for the sake of a thrill. For all the lives that were lost because of your actions, and all the families that had to suffer because of you. This is as far as your lies will take you! The truth has been revealed. There's no place to run or hide anymore. You've finally been caught, Adele Renard. This is the end of your twisted game. No. 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 Is he gonna take his own no. life? I mean, no. he's got his meds, he could just go. No. How could this ha happen? I was pre prepared. Fight, 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 Impossible. I can't be cornered by these fools. Your move. You're the fool now. There's nowhere I can go. Your move. There's no escape. He's gonna chug the pills. Take Check it. No escape. Uh. Or he just faints like a whip. What is Captain Renard's current status, Miss Von Karma? He is currently detained and awaiting to be transported to The Hague to face trial in the International Criminal Court. They have also seized the evidence he was carrying regarding the Helio 6 incident. Allied nation authorities are on their way to pick him up. Very well, they will take it from there. As for this trial, I think bad. we have finally cleared the circumstances around Captain Harvey's death. It is time to finish the trial with a suitable verdict. For the murder of Captain Janice Harvey, the court finds the defendant Mike November. Oh, the court is adjourned. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that was one intense trial. I think I need to sit down for a moment. You can say that again. At least now you know what it's like to be held hostage. Although, luckily there was no real danger this time around. All's well that ends well, huh? Mr. Wright, I'm forever indebted to you. All in a day's work. Don't be so modest. I really meant what I said. You have not only cleared my name, but Charlie's as well. You brought closure to everyone hurt by the Helio 6 incident. Now the victims and their families can finally find peace. So why the glum look? Come on, Mike. Smile a little. I know I should. He was in a life situation. Life and death situation. Come on. <laughs> oh, perhaps we can help you with that. How exactly? Maya, could you please contact your sister? Your thing, Nick. I'm a little confused the about Sam that. Hill? Maya here is attuned with the spirit realm. This is her sister, Mia. Sure, why not? Nice to meet you, Mr. November. Congratulations on your verdict. I've been following the trial with great interest with a couple of others from my current place of residence. Is this real? Real enough to be admissible in court, at least. Your brother here on this side wants me to convey a message for you. Would you like to hear what he has to say? What? Charlie? Uh, of, of course! What's up, little brother? It's been a while since we had a chat, hasn't it? I'm real glad to see that you're off the hook now. You had me worried there for a moment. And I see you decided to follow in my footsteps and join the AN as well. Way to go. I know you'll make a fine peacekeeper. Listen. I just wanted to tell you that I am hugely proud of you, and I'm glad you didn't choose this path just for my sake. After all, your life is your own, and I want you to be happy doing what you enjoy. So look towards the future, and be happy, damn it! 
I know yeah. you may not see <laughs> me, but I'll always be with you in spirit. <laughs> Ch Charlie, thank you, bro. Bro. Ah, uh, aren't reunions always so touching? Yeah. There's nothing quite like meeting old acquaintances, is there? I wouldn't be so quick to get behind such a statement, Mr. Phoenix, right? Miss Von Karma? What, uh, uh, surprise? Can I help you with anything? Frankly, I think you've helped me more than enough during this case. Please try not to take the verdict too personally. Mr. November was... <laughs> Jumping to conclusions again, are we? As far as I am concerned, I did not lose today. Thanks to my performance, and with some modest aid from you, that monster, Adele Renard, has been brought to justice. I give credit where credit is due. You're good for something, Phoenix Wright. My theories are always perfect. But I've come to realize that even perfection is fragile. There is no true perfection without chaos. You are the counterweight who I can count on to shamelessly explore even the most ridiculously foolish possibilities. Therefore, allowing me to polish my theories towards true perfection. Your inability to feel shame is doing me a service. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, okay. I guess. Hey, cut Nick some slack! What are you talking about? It was a most sincere compliment. Well, don't I feel ever so slightly offended in the most heartwarming way. However, I didn't come here for meaningless chit-chat. Bring them in! Yes, sir! Lieutenant, Dr. Siegfried. Mike, please. I don't think our ranks matter anymore. Mike, we were never able to apologize enough for what we made you go through. Again, we never meant for you to get tangled up in our retribution. It was an act of two desperate souls trying to find peace through vigilantism. It is only by mere twist of fate that we cannot be labeled I guess they're going to jail? Murderers. I... I understand. I cannot be angry at you for what you did, even if it was wrong. But in the end, you weren't the ones who killed Captain Harvey. Regardless, we are going to take full responsibility for our plan. So I believe this may also be our farewell. What's going to happen to them now, Ms. Von Karma? They have confessed to the attempted murder of Captain Janus Harvey for which they will be tried. However, their motives are strongly related to the Helio 6 incident, which means the case falls under Ally Nation's jurisdiction. Their testimony is also of paramount interest in the upcoming trial in The Hague. I believe things will work out, so to say. Aha! So this is where everyone's huddling up at. I don't know if you're off your rocker or brave as hell. But damn, son, you deserve a real medal. Take this. It's a first-class medal for fearless bravery. Wear it with pride. <laughs> oh, why, thank you. Wow, that's really cool, Nick. You too, Miss Von Karma. If you really insist. Not many of these exist, you know? I made them both myself. I, uh, see. Well, it's, it's the thought that, that counts. counts. Oh, and sorry for making you do those push-ups when we first met. Though I still think the swing of your arm could use some extra oomph when pulling off that objecting stuff. Lieutenant, Doc, had a good time serving with you. Godspeed on whatever may come your way. We appreciate your sentiment, Mr. Tennant. I trust you will keep the peacekeepers in high spirits after I'm gone? You can count on it, Lieutenant. Now that I remember, Mr. Phoenix Wright, I have something for you as well. Here. Huh? What's this? Something I've been meaning to return to you. Open it later. Okay, then! Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, there were some uniform guys outside the lobby who wanted to talk to you, Mr. Wright. What? Me? Yeah, apparently they were from Allied Nations. They said they wanted to enlist you or something. Huh? Oh, that's fantastic! I'll take you under my wing and teach you to shout so loud <laughs> you'll shatter glass! You'll be praying for mercy, but together we'll prevail! Huh? Huh? Great. And I'm sure as an almost fellow AN staff member, you'll do this case pro bono? I really didn't I don't think he'll accept how it. I'm gonna actually pay you. Huh? 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 Oh, 
And Nick? You still owe me and Pearls a trip to Gatewater Land. And all the burgers we can eat. <laughs> I believe I can sum up my thoughts in just one word. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, this is gonna be good. One more time won't hurt. Let's hear it. Go right ahead. Show us what you got, son. Come on, all together now. OBJECTION! Yeah, that was pretty good. Although it shocked me with the whole grenade thing. Or, yeah, I think it was a grenade. So, yeah, that was my final reaction to Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. That was, uh, quite interesting. Hope you guys liked it. Have a nice day.